Hello everyone and welcome to our new series Road to TCG Worlds 2018. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now, as many of you might know, we did get top 8 at Worlds this season. Uh, just this past, not this weekend, but the one beforehand. And we managed that with Gardevoir GX. Now, I made a poll on my Facebook page and a lot of you guys really want to see post-rotation content. A lot of you guys also want to see expanded. So what I'm going to do this week is we are going to have both. Today we're going to have the standard list and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we're going to have expanded. And then on Friday we'll maybe do Pokedex or we might have standard once again. Okay? So today I figured the best way to start off the new series would be updating uh, the new or the world's list. Um, Gardevoir GX will stay a very, very strong deck going into a new format, I believe. Um, and the list shouldn't really change much simply because um, the only big loss are the VS Seekers. Uh, the rest pretty much stays the same. And we're gonna take those four VS Seekers and increase our consistency. So let's take a quick look at Gardevoir GX. 230 HP. Uh, ability Secret Spring allows you to attach a Fairy Energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Uh, very good synergy, of course, with Infinite Force, which deals 30 damage for every energy attached to Gardevoir GX and the opposing Pokemon. And then Twilight GX is able to shuffle 10 cards from your discard pile into your deck. Now, Twilight GX is even stronger now just because you get to reuse some supporters. Um, the format will probably be slower, so there might be turns where you can actually afford to do this instead of attacking in order to get back resources such as Guzma, such as Ends, and such as Double Colorless Energy. Now, paired with Gardevoir, we have Galade, which has a Premonition Attack, uh, which lets you take a look at the next five cards in your deck. You also get Sensitive Blade, which deals a very nice amount of damage after you've used a Supporter card. and has very good synergy with Octillery, where you get to rearrange your top deck, and then with Octillery, you get to draw the exact cards you you wanted off of those five. Um, Octillery, great support Pokemon, great anti-end card, and their other support Pokemon are, of course, Tapu Lele, with the Wonder Tag ability, which allows you to search for a supporter, and can also be a really good attacker with Energy Drive. Then we also have a Lowland Vulpix, which searches for two Pokemon, and now that VS Seeker is gone uh, from the standard format, it's more likely that you'll get to keep those two Pokemon simply because it's not easy for your opponent to just reuse them off of a VS Seeker. Their ends, their ends are actually fairly limited. And then we also have Tayansi, which with Sparkling Wish, opposed to Vulpix, um, gets the evolution into play. Both have their advantages. The world champion did use one of each, so we're following in those footsteps. I only used Tianzi at my world's run. I never missed ball picks, but I can see the advantages of both. Now our supporter lineup is pretty straightforward. We're using four Sigamore and four N in order to half draw. We're using four Guzma in order to have the gust effect, which is really nice. And then we're using two Bridgets in order to to aid our setup. Two Bridget, three Tabulele, and four Ultra Ball should really give us big odds of starting Bridget early on, which is one of the main priorities of the deck. Now, for support, we have our four, our four Consistency and support. We have four Ultra Ball, three Rare Candy, three Choice Band, two Field Lower, and two Rescue Stretcher. So the big missing cards are VS Seeker and Teammates from my world's list, um, but we're gonna try out this list. We might need some energy recovery, perhaps, in the form of Fisherman in order to recover the basic energies. But for now, um, I feel like this list is a very solid starting point. And then we are going to be using four double colorless energy and nine fairy energy in order to power up our attacks. And yeah, so that's the list. Let's jump into the ladder, which has not been updated with the standard format rules. Um, it will be updated starting September 1st. So we might be facing off against less um, against previous standard format decks. So this is a mirror match. But we might be up against the VS Seeker version of the deck. So that's something to take into account. But the big part or the big thing to take away from this video would be the initial list, which you can use to tweak and modify to your playstyle. And also um, to see how the deck runs. We'll probably be uh, behind in terms of 
in terms of resources just because we won't have the seeker like my opponent will probably do but we'll try to make the best we can i mean we we have an increased amount of supporters in order to compensate and the big loss is only teammates but provided we get a decent enough hand we might not even need the teammates so yeah let's see how we do now we need to mulligan as we start off the new season and the new series and there we go so the ley lane hand guarantees the um, guarantees the bridget and the fact that we have two bridget should pretty much mean that we will never miss a bridget uh, um, as long as we have ley ley or will trouble that fear of bridget being prized is gone and if i could make one change to my world deck it would definitely definitely be um dropping the fisherman which as you can see i'm not running here and adding the second bridget in order to avoid these those horrible scenarios where it's actually priced now looking at my hand i don't really need any support uh pokemon such as diancia and vulpix so i'm just gonna grab uh, the Remorade and the Turalts, because I also saw the Artillery beforehand. And now let's check our price cards. We know one Ralts is priced. And then we know that two... No, one N is priced. One Ralts, one N, one Sycamore. One Choice Band. One Fairy Energy. And something else that I'm not sure what... It, oh, and one Remorade. So those are our six prizes, nothing too impactful. And yeah, so who do we power up here? Powering up their active routes is risky because of the threat of Floatstone, DC, Tapu Lele. Also the fact that we're not gonna rare candy into Gardevoir, or it seems very unlikely that we get that. So there's no real reason there's no real reason to power up the active routes. It's just, it's, as a, it's an unnecessary risk, basically. Next turn, we have the double kill, yeah, the DC and the N. The DC can be used to spread out my energy. Um, and yeah, so the, 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 blah. The price routes will probably hurt us. However, my opponent not drawing or not finding Bridget on turn one is pretty impactful. Um, we actually don't get a good hand off of the off of the end. However, however, two very important things are gonna happen this upcoming turn. I'm gonna retreat into the Vault Picks and search for two Pokemon, Octillery and Akirlia, or Octillery and a Gardevoir, which should guarantee um, either Octillery draw or um, Octillery draw or and then for my opponent, giving us a brand new hand. Now he does retreat into the into the, the, the into the Dianti and wow, he draws into parallel CD. So that actually completely, completely changes our our strategy. He draws into a parallel CD. So now we don't have the space to play down the Bulpix, which is pretty huge. Um, I don't know how many my opponent runs. But that's a very lucky draw of a, such a big deck. But hey, there's not much we can do. So now we are we are also in top deck mode. And there's nothing we can do really besides smacking the Diancy. And we'll have to see what my opponent drew off of that N. Hopefully he drew another N. That would be best case scenario for us. Because our second turn was incredibly weak. But no, he gets a Sycamore off of the end. Discarding a DCE. Another Sycamore. And a Hex. So the Hex does mean my opponent is using the... The regular standard version. Now he does immediately bench a Vulpix. Which now his bench has Vulpix and uh, Diancy active. So he won't have that much space. However, if we keep um, having this horrible, horrible hand, it won't even matter that he's using up a lot of resources there. He 
He's also using Acer Rolla. And he discarded the Galate, so that could be impactful in the long term. Although I'm sure he runs Stretcher, so maybe not so much. Hopefully he whiffed the energy though. At least. Okay, he does whiff the energy and we top deck Guzma. So top decking Guzma doesn't really help us. I mean, we could start pressuring our Ralts, but I don't want to just retreat. Or do I? And magical shot the Ralts? Is that my best play? I mean, Guzmas are a premium in my deck. Guzmas are definitely a premium, but I guess I'll go for it just because I'm in such a dire situation that I might actually, the two hit KO on the Ralts might actually be really good for us. And yeah, we have the two support Pokemon and the bridge in hand, so... I mean, those three cards could easily be any of our Sycamores, any of our Ultra Balls, any of our Ends. But alas, they are not. So yeah. <laughs> now, that Rare Candy Cardivore means he top decked either the Cardivore or the Rare Candy. And if he had something like... <laughs> yep, if he had something like a Sycamore, then we are done for. So yeah, I mean, not only are we at a disadvantage based on my opponent's supporters he's using, but <laughs> we also drew pretty badly, unlike him. Pretty, pretty badly. So our strategy to took it KO the routes actually backfires and he gets a Girlia, he already has a Gardevoir GX in play. Our only saving grace could potentially be the fact that he might whiff the energy, but I really doubt it. Yeah, there's the ability secret spring. But I might just consider after this to try and showcase how the list works just a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, we're not winning this one, guys. We are not winning this one. Not with this kind of luck. <laughs> not with this kind of luck. In mirrors, it's who sets up better. And my opponent, without needing any of the support Pokemon, has managed to set up better. And... We completely dead drew, so I'm just gonna concede and let's try to find another game where we can actually do something. I mean, there's nothing you can do when you dead draw. Like I said, the Volpix, the Diancy, the Bridget, the Choice Band. That's four cards that could have easily been a Gardevoir, an Ultra Ball, a Sycamore, an N. Any of those, right? Any of those would have helped. What are you gonna do? Now we're up against... A lightning psychic colorless type deck. So this could be Mega Rayquaza, which without Pseudo Wudo, once again we're at a huge disadvantage, but you never I mean Pseudo Wudo is not a big consideration here. Um for the new standard format, simply because simply because um Mega Rayquaza is no longer legal. Or this could be, actually, yeah, this is probably the Garbodor Toolbox deck. So that's already a, a decent enough problem for decent enough problem for for Gardevoir. That deck was my only loss at Worlds during Swiss, and yeah. Now we're not even having access to VS Seekers or things like that. Double Coco, single Necrozma, and Trubbish in play. 
Now, I'm not a huge fan of building up my bench, of course, but I don't think I have a choice. We do see that one bridge is priced, however, we are playing two, so that helps. And okay, so last time I was punished, I guess, for not going for a support Pokemon. Artillery is there. Now, the odds of you dead drawing twice off of two ends, I feel like, are low enough that I really feel like I can afford to take this risk. <laughs> I hope I can afford to take this risk, and it's like, calling that a risk is pretty... Oh. Okay, if he gets Garbo, Tugs, and Garb, we'll probably have to... <sighs> Ultra Ball into Vulpix. Um, there's Ultra Ball, so there's gonna be the Garbodor. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. So we're just, we're not capable of drawing supporter cards. We're not capable of drawing draw supporter cards. <laughs> so we're not really starting off the, the new Road to DC Worlds 2018 strong enough. Um, okay, that's a, that's a decent top deck, thank you. Thank you. Um, my Kirlia should be safe enough here. Um, do I want to end my opponent though? Do I really want to end my opponent? Or do I just smack? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna smack. My opponent's hand is low enough that I really don't feel comfortable ending him. And then next turn, I can search for the Guardi, attach the DC, knock out the Tapu Goko. And yeah, we've seen no the Oh yeah, the special charge is from Ancient Origins, I believe. So my opponent's list is also pre pre Guardians Rising. I mean pre pre standard format, pre the new rotation. And there we see the flying flip, but that Tapu Goko will not survive long enough here. Now I do top deck an N, I mean a Sycamore. So the rescue stretcher is gone now. Which supporter do I want? I guess I want the Sycamore, just because my opponent already has 6 cards, so I don't really gain any advantage um, by reshuffling his hand. I have no information in his hand uh, to know whether it's threatening or not, and by doing this, I... Okay, so I get double rare candy, I get the Octillery, I also get a Field Blower, however, I don't need to use the Field Blower this turn. So, I'd assume you only play that deck if you have access to the Espion EX. Um, yes, Espion EX is the biggest worry here, so I don't want to use my rare candy either just yet. And we hit for 150, that's pretty good. But okay, things are looking decent enough. Um, two float zones in play does mean my opponent only has two more left. We see a third Tapu Goko, which is very different from the um, from the Japanese list that made top eight at Worlds. And we're gonna see my opponent try to trap my artillery in the active spots. So this is where I'm going to field lower and activate my my Lele to find a Guzma. However, I find the Guzma on its own, so that's pretty good. Now, the thing here is, I kind of want to use Guzma to try to knock out this Garbodor. I think that would be a game-winning move. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Discard both Lodestones, of course, and then I'm going to Rare Candy into the routes that had energy. Then I'm going to Guzma up the Garbodor. And now I just need one energy, any kind of energy. I'm gonna bench the Lele, however, I'm not gonna search for a supporter card. I just need an energy, no matter which one, just an energy out of these two cards. And uh, no, I do not get it. Ugh, I do not get it. Okay, so now we need my opponent to not have Guzma or a Floatstone. If he has Guzma, we are going to be in big trouble. There's Ultra Ball. 
for Lele for Cosma, I would assume. Yep. That energy on the bench guard war. That could be the big differential. There's a Guzma. I mean, as long maybe if he doesn't have the floatstone, we are good. If he also has a floatstone out of that two card hand, the third floatstone as well. Okay, he doesn't. That's good. So knocks out a routes has two knockouts on the guardy and the artillery, which is of course really bad. Um I get a choice band and I mean my play is of course to end here gonna put back the routes into play and now once again I need two energy here not a fan of using the end I only get one energy however oh boy here we go secret spring onto the artillery Octillery for one card. Can I hit an energy off of one card? And I can't. Oh, so frustrating. So frustrating. Oh, we see a Plumeria. To remove the fairy energy, oh, to completely remove all the energy from my Cardivore, and we see another flying clip. Okay, so Necrozma GX is looking extremely, extremely scary. The combination of Necrozma plus, um, plus Espion EX will for sure um, knock us out here. And even just Necrozma attacking on its own would be enough to knock out my my Guardi, I think, at this point. Uh, it deals... no, never mind. It's not dealing enough damage. Okay, so Abyssal Hand. There's another. Now, all of... well, not all of my Gardevoirs. I'm gonna seek... no! I'm gonna Secret Spring onto the Gardevoir. And I'm just gonna take a knockout, but yeah, we're not in a good position by any means. By any, any means. My opponent has yet to showcase a single... Um, a single pre... Pre-rotation card, so maybe we are up against a post-rotation deck. Um, if he attacks with Necros, my GX's attack... Then all he would need would be SP and EX. One, two, three, four, five, six item cards in our discard pile. We see an old trouble. Discarding Ninja Boy and the other Garboder once again, the Garbotoxin. But yeah, missing that knockout on the Garboder is probably going to be very impactful. Probably going to be very impactful. Um, we get a double colorless energy. What we're gonna need is a rare candy. We're gonna need to find the rare candy once he uses SPN EX. However, here, wow. He actually chooses, or he either doesn't find an energy or something. Um, wow, okay. So I'm gonna thin up my deck here gonna find the Vulpix, the rare candy is there, and we do have the DCE, so we can actually take a knockout here, which is very impactful. There's a lot of pressure to my opponent. Now, if I had managed to knock out this Garbodor with Garbotoxin, um, I would have access to Octillery, so I would feel pretty secure, and we'd be down to one prize card to win the match. However, I did not, so now we need one of our Cosmas remaining, one of our three Cosmas left in the deck. Or, it's gonna take us two turns to get a knockout. We're also gonna use, lose Octillery. Yeah, we're in a precarious situation. Even though we're so far ahead in price cards, um, a single attack by Necrozma 
Well, actually, this this probably wins the match for us. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Whew. He's gonna use prismatic burst instead of the GX attack in order to knock us out, and he also fills up his bench, which is pretty pretty interesting, I would say. Um, okay. <laughs> We actually got the game winning Guzma potentially. Potentially. Um, I could use Twilight GX here to put back energy and reduce Garbodor's potential damage output. However, I'm also tempted to just outright attack the Necros. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Twilight GX. I'm gonna take this opportunity. Gonna put back the rare candies just in case my opponent is using um, is using six item cards is a lot though. Um, just in case he is using SPNEX, which we haven't seen yet. Stretcher, I guess just one rare candy. And an ultra wall. So there's one, two, three, four item cards uh, left in our deck. So that's 80 damage from Garbodor. Our deck gets pre um, a lot bigger for sure. But we have two field blower once again. Um, we have the Guzma. I hope I don't regret not attacking the Necrozma though. I could potentially regret doing that. Could definitely potentially regret doing that. I've only played one Sycamore though. There's a Garbo, I mean the Trash Challenge Garboder. Does he have a way to retreat? If he retreat if he manually retreats with an energy. Ugh. Okay. No VS Seekers for my from my opponent. So his list is definitely post-rotation, which is, makes me really happy. Um If I had an energy elsewhere, I could just Guzma and knock out that Garboder, and that would probably let me win the match. So I'm gonna thin out my deck once again. I am going to thin out my deck. Actually, I think I'm gonna grab the Rim Raid and bench it. Just because um, if he does use SPNEX, I get the artillery back so I can immediately evolve into the Rim Raid once again. But I just want one energy. Just one energy. That's what we're looking for. Just one energy. In order to Guzma up the Garboder, the Garbotoxin Garb. And to get our artillery up and running. So one energy. That's what we're looking for. One energy. Okay, my opponent draw passes. We get the DC. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So we're finally going to be able to knock out this hard border. We're going to have access to abilities. And my opponent doesn't really have too much going. Um, if he knocks out the double Lele, that's fine. The odds of him having Rescue Stretcher for Garbotoxane and the 4th. Um, the 4th Float Zone. Oh no, the 4th Float Zone are down. So, Artillery should stay alive no matter what. And if my opponent does bench the SPNEX, which he doesn't. Um, wow, he goes for the Acid Spray play. And flips heads. However... Um, Okay, I'm going to N, and even though I get less cards, that's fine, because we're just trying to draw more, we're trying to draw energy. We need any any combination of two energy, that is, we need a fairy energy and any other energy to win this match. And just one energy. We only get the one energy. And we get a pretty unplayable hand afterwards. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five item cards. Still three prizes to go over my opponent, so I'm just gonna do this. I might even remove my own choice bands next turn, but my opponent cannot shut off artillery anymore, so that's really good for us. That is really, really good for us. Perhaps next turn we can win the match. If he spreads with Tapu Koko, he would actually knock out my artillery. Ooh, Ninja Boy. Okay, into Koko. I figured maybe he could Ninja Boy into Necrozma, attach DC. Oh, but 
There's a knockout on the artillery. Yikes. Now we need to top deck an energy. Oh, wow. That top deck. That top deck is huge. I mean... Wow, that was incredibly, incredibly close. And well played to my opponent. And this match was super interesting because it was post-rotation. So really, really interesting deck by my opponent. The Garbodor Toolbox deck. And yeah, Whew, that was a really grindy win for sure. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, we did get to showcase a post-rotation deck, which makes me really happy. Um, a post-rotation battle between two decks. And yeah, this will be all for me today, guys. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Um, I will be live streaming later today. If you're watching this today on Monday, or you'll get to see the uh, the rest of the live stream over uh, over the next few days, which will be expanded as we as we work our way towards Fort Wayne Regionals. Okay, so yeah, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.